Shout out to Mustard, because I've been seeing the moves on Instagram, and this video specifically has been on my timeline. I've seen it on Instagram as well, blow up. Um, and it's about the Boston Celtics, specifically Jason Tatum. And honestly, I got a lot to say about this right here, because um, it is a take. It is a tape that people make for Jason Tatum. This man has gone out there over the last couple years with some of the best roster construction in the league. Oh, Jalen Brown doesn't know that he's a number two. Oh, Marcus Smart is so inefficient. Oh, Joe Mazzula. Nigga, Jason Tatum's right there. You can't tell me Kawhi fully healthy with that <laughs> roster isn't a championship guaranteed. You can't tell me LeBron fully healthy with that roster isn't a championship guaranteed. Kevin Durant with that roster isn't a championship guaranteed at some point. Tatum, either you give him the criticism for not getting the job done, or you just come out right and admit he's not at that level. He's not a number one. When they went to the finals, they win that series if Jason Tatum doesn't get bitched by Andrew fucking Wiggins. Niggas talk about last year. Oh, Weren't they down 3-0 before that, right? Tatum isn't that guy. At some point, we gotta come to that conclusion and cut the bullshit, nigga. It's insane to me the excuses that people make. That is, um, hey, I think Mustard gave his best Gilbert Arenas impression. I ain't gonna lie. Because what he said right there, it was sounding like what Gilbert Arenas was saying about a Sir Thompson. No cap. Now, I, I, I will say this. It's not all false. There is some truth to what he's saying. Because I have said on this platform multiple fucking times that the Celtics are a championship contender. They are a contender. I have them coming out of the East. Um, in my opinion, they are the best constructed team in the league right now. In my opinion, they have the best shot to win a championship this year. Um, honestly, out of the last three years. I don't know, man. 2022, man. <laughs> there, was, there was up 2-1. There was actually up 2-1. Um, but I also have said on this platform that you need a tier 1 caliber player to win a championship. Right? Um, said that when we talked about Jalen Brunson. I said that when we talked about other teams as well. That is just a belief that I have about the NBA. And... I analyzed it on the same fucking platform. As of right now, I do not think Jason Tatum is a tier one player. I don't I don't think he's playing at a tier one level. Um and I'm just going off of what I've seen. I'm just going off of what I've seen, and that's that's the only thing I can go off. So just to recap the season that he's having so far, we're talking about 27 points. Around eight to nine rebounds a game, around four to five assists a game. Uh forty seven percent from the field, thirty-four rounded up to thirty-five percent from three, and he's going to the line about seven times, eighty one percent from the field. Um around a block and a steal a game. But honestly, the blocks and steals don't do his defense justice. Cause Jason Tatum to me is an above average defender. I I, I would just say he's a good defender. I, I'm I'm gonna keep it a beat. He he is just a good defender. Um Leading the the Boston Celtics to the best record in the league and has held that held that record um, for I would say just ninety percent of the season so far. There's been a couple of days where the Timberwolves had the best record in the league. There were a couple of days where the Bucks had the best record in the East, but for the most part, the Boston Celtics have maintained that number one seed for a majority of the season. Um, but still, when I look at the tier one players. I'm sorry, but this just isn't isn't good enough. This this right here is not good enough. And if anything, with the help that he has around him, with the opportunities that he got, because he's still getting shots. Um, and specifically the looks that he's getting. Because that's sort of God, every time I see Jason Tatum play, he is just missing wide open shots, bro. He is missing shots that he should be making. Um, he is getting a lot of open opportunities. He is getting a lot of, um, you know what I'm saying, one-to-one, -one, one man coverage. And for a guy who touts himself as a, as a bucket, for a guy who touts himself as one of the best isolation scorers in the league, if you need a bucket, I could get you one type of player. You should, this, this should be more efficient. This should be, this should, the efficiency is where I'm really concerned. I understand this is a career high, 
Forty-seven percent, especially you know, I'm, I'm looking at ever since he became a volume scorer. First three, all right, he shot forty-eight percent from the field. His his first um season in the league, but yes, this is a career high, but I it should be higher. It should be higher. Um, in my opinion, this should be closer to fifty fifty-two percent. Um, the three-point percentage, Tatum. You, I swear to God, bro. There are some nights where this guy legitimately, like, I, I, I watch him play and he thinks he's Steph Curry. Tatum, oh my God, bro. You are six foot nine, six foot ten with a handle. Um, and you're actually built now at this point in your career. You're not the lanky dude that you came into the league as, bro. Like, I, I, I swear to God, like, the play style that would actually work for you and honestly would benefit this team the most is if you played like LeBron. Now, I, don't, I understand you don't have the passing skills, the vision that LeBron has, but just because he's going to be a ball-dominant player. He's going to get his shots up. But essentially what I'm saying is just attack the rim more. All right? may, maybe the LeBron comparison is, is not the right thing to say. But I swear, bro, all, all I want is for Jason Tatum to attack the rim more because he has the skill, he has the athleticism, and he has the height and the weight. And the body to be much more effective than what he is right now. He should he shouldn't be taking nine threes a game. He shouldn't be taking nine threes a game. I understand he fell in love with that side step three a couple years back. That shit ain't falling for 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 one reason or another. For one reason or another. And this is your third season in a row shooting nine threes a game on below a uh, below league average efficiency. At some point, these aren't just bad shooting seasons. This is just who you are, Tatum. This is just who you are. So cut the three pointers down, please and fucking thank you. Please and thank you. I don't know if that's a Tatum problem. That may be a Missoula problem. Who the fuck knows? But bro, stop it. Stop it. Uh, attack the rim. Attack the rim more. Um. So with that being said, I I this is coming from a dude who sees the flaws in Jason Tatum. But on the other side of the coin, I think Mustard's being too hard on him. I, th I think Mustard is being too hard on him. I think a lot of NBA fans are still being too hard on Tatum. And I swear to God, like, the, it, it sounds crazy. But my theory is, is that the one-and-done era of NBA phenoms has damn near ruined basketball discourse. It, it it has it has because what it, what it especially when you come great out the gate and that was Tatum a lot of hype in in his rookie season um, touted as a bucket out the gate and has improved every single season um, you know was an all star by his third season you know what I'm saying like that's that's Tatum's career path and the reason why I say this is. On top of, like, LeBron, that sort of guy just fucking up our perception as to how NBA players are supposed to progress. And even then, like, I'll, I'll get into it in a second. What happens is you get players who are great out the gate. Oh, my God, this guy is him. That First of all, that, that too. We are way too quick to put that him label on people. Oh, my God, uh, he's him. Bro, he's averaging 14 points a game. Let's let's calm down. He's a, he's a future MVP. Uh, 14 points a game. Let's let's just calm down. Let's just can we just let players develop? So now we're in a situation where you know th this guy up until he was 21 was over performing his expectations, right? This is a guy that that the league has put in front of our faces for seven years at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years at this point. This is a guy who has made deep playoff runs ever since his rookie season. Deep playoff run here, deep playoff run here. Um, hey, still made it to the second round here. Um, was in the first round this year. Eastern Conference Finals, uh, NBA Finals, excuse me. Eastern Conference Finals to a Game 7. And now he has championship um, aspirations again. And we've gotten to a point where, like, you know, like, motherfuckers have been talking about Tatum for seven years, and he still hasn't won a championship. And because of motherfuckers' short attention span and people wanting uh, quick gratification so fucking fast, oh, now, now he can't be him. 
or now we got to come to a to a realization about Jason Tatum at some point. Now I do agree there is a point we have to come to that realization, right? I think I think there's lines with everything, right? So I do agree with Mustard on that front. That there is there, there is a certain line where we have to just accept Jason Tatum as a dude that's never going to become a tier 1 player and this is just where where he lands. Every every generation needs a Carmelo Anthony. Is that Tatum? I say this all the time. Every 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 generation needs a Chris Webber. Is that Jason Tatum? And that's fine. I'm completely every every generation needs a T Mac. Every generation needs a Vince Carter. Every generation needs these players who are great individually, who even get to to extreme heights as a basketball. But every generation needs a a Carl Malone. Not, not that way. <laughs> not that way. Every generation needs a Charles Barkley. Is that Jason Tatum? There is a line where we have to come to that realization, right? But is this that point? I personally don't think so. For this season, still, there's a lot of basketball to be played. There's 50 more fucking games to be played. And from what I've seen of Tatum, he starts to heat up in the second half of the season. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Usually has a slump around January or December. Um, starts off the season hot every single fucking season, though, damn near. But typically, going into the playoffs, that's when he starts to heat up. That that is that is when he starts to heat up. But yeah, with, with Tatum, listen, I understand it, it's starting to get old at this point. But we have to under like facts are facts. We have to understand that number one, he's in year seven, going into year seven. This is uh, not going into year seven, but this is this is year seven, first half of year seven. Number two, again, it, it, it seems like a a a broken record player. But he is 25 turning 26. He is 25 turning 26. Number two. And number three, this is his third season being the number one option on a championship contender. This is this is just his third season being a number one option. Like the clear number one option. This is his fourth season being a number one option. I think he, uh, by 2021, he was a number one option on the team. 26 points a game, seven rebounds. I think Kem Kemba fell off at this point already. Um, and he established himself as the, the his, all right, this is the number one dude that, on, on, on the team. But this is his third season. And it hasn't even finished. We're not even at the halfway point as the first option on a championship contending team at 25 going into 26 years old. And to say that, hey, he's just he's just not him. We got to come to that realization at some point. I agree, but is it is it is this year that point? I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. Because even if we compare it to the tier 1 players, let's look at Jokic. Cuz this this is the comparison, right? This is what the standard that we're holding this guy to. Jokic became a number one option when? Like, like truly. I'd say 2019, right? 2019. Jokic came into the league as a 21-year-old. Tatum came in as a 19-year-old, I believe. So right around the same age range when they came into the league. Give or take a year. But Jokic became a number one option 2019. I believe this was the first season they also became like a, a number one seed. Um, if if I if I'm not mistaken. Jokic uh, number two seed, 54 win team. Jokic is the best player on this team, right? One, two. This is one, two, three, four, five. It took him five seasons as a number one option on a championship level team to win a championship. If we quit on Jokic by 2022, 2021. What are what are we doing? Now you might say, hey, Jokic won MVPs by that point. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but the point still stands of this is a this is a guy who showed a lot of promise. This is a guy who had a lot of regular season success, just like Jason Tatum. This is a guy who made deep playoff runs leading up to the 2023 season. And he put it together by the time he was 27. And by the time he was a, uh, and by his one, two, three, four, fifth year as a first option. 
imagine if we just said, yo, at some point, we just got to come to a realization Jokic is not him at the 2021 season. At Jokic's third season as a number one option at age 25. That would be insane. That that would be insane. Okay, B Souls, bring up some other 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 examples. Giannis. Let's go to Giannis. Giannis came into the league at 19. Right? He wasn't great off the bat. That's fine. But I would say he became the number one option on this team, what, 2017? Really? I mean, you need to look back at 2016. Excuse me. 2016, I might I might actually give it a Chris Middleton, but I feel like it's one of those, if you watch the games, like Giannis was already the best player on this team type of situation. But let, let's just, hey, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And let's say 2018. By 2018, 27, 10, and 5, you are the best player on the scene, number one option, this, that, and the third. Right? So that's what? 2018. His third season being a number one option would be 2020. His third season being a number one option on a championship level team would be 2021. It would be this season. This would be like Tatum's. Year this season, that would be 2021. When Jokic won a championship. At damn near the same age. Like, damn near the, the same. And this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years into the league. So imagine if we imagine if we said Giannis was just not him. And Loki, we already were. But in retrospect, again, we shouldn't have. 30 games into 2021 saying, yo, Giannis is just not him, dog. That that bag is not bagging. Where will we come to the realization that he's just not him? At tw- In literally the year he wins a championship. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. And I, 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 could, I could pull up more examples. I, if y'all want me to pull up more examples, let's even go to Kevin Durant. Let's go to, let's go to KD. Let's see what he's talking about. KD also came into the league at 19. Um, first year as a first option, honestly, at the gate, to be honest with you. But let's go from when they started being a contender, 21. Right. Um, 22, actually. 21, they were still an eight seed. They lost to... Um, they lost to whatchamacallit. They lost to the Lakers. But let's say let's start it off at 2010. One, two, three, four. This this right here is his, his fourth year being a number one option for real, for real as that guy in the league. Uh, but let okay, let's just start off at 2011. 2011, one, two, three. Kevin Durant wins MVP at age 25. Already made it to the finals as as a 23-year-old. Again, hey, 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 listen. I know some of y'all in the comment section, and you might even think me as well, would say, hey, psh, you don't think you don't think KD is him. I think I think KD is him. We just have the to, to have the, the proper conversations with him. And I still do think, you know, in the in this area, he could have still won a championship, just not on the Warriors. Um but that's 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 neither here or there. But just again, the the point stands of Quitting on a quitting quitting on Jason Tatum in year seven as a twenty five going into a twenty six year old in his third season of championship level expectations for for as a number one is insane, bro. Is insane. If we want to have this conversation three to four years from now, and under three, so you're so you're giving Tatum three to four more. Years? Yes, because Jason Tatum three to four years from now will be twenty eight, twenty nine. That that. That's why I'm giving him the time. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how time works. I'm I'm sorry. And this is why I said the one and done era has like fucked up our perception, and LeBron partially has fucked up our perception on like when players should be winning, when players should be um dominating, when players should be like all, all, all of this shit. All of this shit. Like every, every, I swear to God, everything is just fucked up in terms of our perception 
Um, even with the Detroit Pistons, like I understand, like I even like I even have to catch myself when I, when I made that Detroit Pistons video calling for Monty's coaching job. But like these these players need their time, and when you're coming into the league at 19. Four years from 19, you're still 23. Four years from 23, you're still 27. That's eight years into the league. He's still 27. Give give these players fucking time. Holy, holy shit, dog. Jordan Jordan didn't start winning till he was 27. And now we're getting into goat talks, but I'm I'm listen, I understand there's context into everything, but let's just look at these tier one all time great players and when they won. LeBron didn't win until he was twenty seven. Year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Till year nine. And even with LeBron, I under I understand we were having the same conversation with LeBron because I, I remember after the twenty ten um, playoffs when LeBron got eliminated. The conversations Skip Bayless wanted to have. The conversations people wanted to have about the chosen one becoming a frozen one. This motherfucker's a fraud. This, that, and the third. He's not the GOAT. This, that, and the third. Again, in retrospect, it, at that time, it made sense because, again, LeBron was, hey, LeBron has been plastered over the NBA for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. Right, been tied as the chosen one, the next one up. Still hasn't won a championship, but again, because of when they came into the league, we need to realize that all this criticism is being pointed towards a dude who came into the league at 19, and because of that, seven years into the league, he's still 25. <clears throat> and then when we look back, yo, what he's done up until 25 is actually crazy. When we look back, yo, he low-key has <laughs> a decade more left in this shit. And then even that, like LeBron is over, you know what I'm saying, overachieved that. Let's look at let's look at other greats. Let's look at other greats. I understand there's anomalies. Like if we, if we look at Tim Duncan, right? Tim Duncan won second year in the league as a 22-year-old. Lockout year, though, but it's cool. Magic Johnson, he won first year in the league, right? Kareem, he won um, second year in the league, 23. What is that second? Yeah, se second year in the league, 23. If you look at Bill Russell, we know we know about Bill Russell. But now we're getting into different eras. But if we're talking about the, the, the modern era, Hakeem. Hakeem... The same drafted the same year as Jordan didn't win later than Jordan. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He didn't win until year ten. Year ten. Right. Um. Who else? Who else in the modern era? I, I'll just go nineties and on. I, if if you want to say that's cherry picking, that's fine. Um. But. We're all, we we also have to come to the realization that the league is different now and it is more competitive. It is more competitive. Um, Kobe. Let's go to Kobe. Kobe Bryant. Kobe's the anomaly, right? Kobe won at 21. But even if we look at Kobe Bryant as a number one option, Kobe didn't win until 09 at age 30. Year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, till you're 13 in the league. And we all know about Bean, so not too much on Bean. Not too much on Bean. I think, D, I think in, in recent history, D-Wade would be legitimately the anomaly. Because uh, Wade won in 06 as a 24-year-old. Um... He would be the anomaly, but, and at Kawhi too, right? Because Kawhi won in 2014, but we're talking about, again, Kawhi wasn't a first option on this team. Kawhi still 
If we look at first option, first ring is the first option. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Year eight. Year eight at age 27. We can keep going. We again we we can we can do this all day. Last last person I want to bring up Steph Curry. Steph Curry didn't win a championship until he was 26 in year one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh 20, not 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 23. Yeah, he, he, until he was 26. He didn't win until he was 26 until year six. But still, if we're talking about age, that's Jason Tatum's age. Like, again, I, I think we've been spoiled, and Jason Tatum's situation is so unique because I, I, I do think he has had the leg up. Um, he has had the best starting situation out of any young player in recent history being drafted into that 2018 team. Um and all the help that he's had over the years, all the all the best roster construction that he's had over the last couple of years, and I, and I will say this: this is not again taking accountability away from Jason Tatum because of the fact that yeah, I, I do blame him for twenty twenty two. I I do. He was a turnover machine. He was foul baiting too much. Um, and he again was just, was just breaking wide open shots. Was getting lamp lamp by Andrew Wiggins. I I put that on him. I put that on him. Twenty twenty three, when we lost to the Heat. I understand Tatum was starting to cook those last three four games, but those last three four games probably wouldn't have existed if Tatum wasn't stinking it up in the first three. So again, this this is coming from a dude who blames Jason Tatum. I'm not caping for Jason Tatum. I also understand that it isn't just all Jason Tatum. There are other factors. It is not. Like, the, the discussion should not just be about one player. But to give up on him, again, last time I'm going to say it, to give up on him and say he's not that guy for real at age 25, year 7, Third third year as a first option, for real, for real. Too soon, Mustard. Too soon. Also, yo, I mean, I, I again, I understand it. I understand it. But, yo, the double standard with the Celtics losses versus the rest of the league is insane, dog. I swear to God, like, it, it's gotten so... And maybe it's just my timeline is because of who I am. But every single Celtics loss... I just get added like crazy. So, so what, what, what does this mean about the Celtics? Do they really got it for real? Is Jason Tatum really that guy? Huh? Jalen Brown, uh, 300 million, this that guy for real? Y'all can't even beat this team. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, it shouldn't have gotten this nasty, but the nastiest example was this very last game against OKC. Was this very last game against OKC. We're talking about... OKC was the second seed in the West at this point. I don't, I don't know if the standings have changed. Celtics had the best uh, record in the league, right? Um, they're on the road. And the Celtics lose. The Celtics lose by four. <laughs> Celtics lose by four. This is a great team facing a great team, and they lose by four. Jason Tatum puts up 30 points, 13 rebounds, and 8 assists. And I watched the fucking game. He played great defense in the fourth quarter. I also watched the game. Hey, Shea was cooking up until the third quarter, but the fourth quarter, 3 points over 3 from the field. Meanwhile, other dude had 8 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds, 3 or 6. But, hey, psh, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. It's fine. But with the way Twitter was talking about the Celtics after this game, you would think that all hell just broke loose. You would think that this was one of the worst losses of the, of the year. Well, no. It's two great teams <laughs> playing great fucking basketball. But now motherfuckers want to talk out their neck 
make all these crazy assumptions about the Celtics after a loss in January that wasn't even a crazy loss. That wasn't even a crazy loss. Now, Jalen Brown, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but if you lose a game, I mean, you wouldn't expect your team to win when everyone's like... When, when there's, like, a couple players on your team stinking it up, right? Like, Drew Alde was 2 of 8. For, again, Jalen Brown was 4 of 18. But the the hypocrisy for me hit the day after. Or really yesterday. Yeah, the, the day after. Because the day after, with all these fucking fraud talks that people want to have about the Celtics, when this same team, the Thunder... Lose to the Atlanta Hawks, a team that's clearly worse than the Celtics. And I hear crickets when the Bucks lose to the Pacers for the, side note, fourth time of the year. I hear crickets, again, another team worse than the Celtics. When I see the Timberwolves, who have the second worst, uh, second best record in the league, lose to, who do, who do they lose to again? The New Orleans Pelicans, again, another team worse than the Celtics. I hear crickets. But when the Celtics lose to a great team in a close game on the road, now all hell breaks loose. Y'all got to relax. Y'all got to relax. Y'all got to relax, bro. Not too much. Not too much, bro. Not too much. Okay, that's one. 